Hello Vikings, welcome back to Station Is. And we have, well, I have managed to solve the problem and I am looking right at it now. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, what that actually happened was when I constructed this, I hastily, when putting all the glass in, I missed one. So I think it was this pane here was left open. Just like this. So, I'm trying to pressurize the room, or I'm trying to suck all the atmosphere out to begin with. <clears throat> and obviously, wondering why it's not working. There's a big hole here. Now, I thought, oh, maybe did I blow it when I was trying to pressurize it? But we never got that high of, high of pressurization. So, when I was editing the video, I played back the footage, which is, there's, isn't actually in the episode. Because it was footage that I fully intended on cutting out. But I left recording anyway. <coughs> which was the actual just putting these frames in. And well if I roll the tape now. You'll see that I did in fact just completely gloss over it. And I didn't. Um, I didn't fill it in. So that is why we couldn't pressurize the room. So what we're going to do is. Because I lost a lot of CO2 yesterday trying to figure that out. So I'm going to go up and sort out some filtration system because I was looking at my filtration as well and I was like, hmm, it doesn't seem to be getting as much gas as I thought it should be. And then when I just emptied the, the furnace tank just now, I noticed a lot of like you, when you can hear the pipes groan. So I was like, hmm, what's causing that? So I have an issue where... Everything is clogged up in one pipe at the moment. And it's this one here. So they're running through in sequence. And this pipe here is getting very, very overpressured. Because um, it needs to, everything needs to go through here and then go through the next one and then go through the next one. And when you're dealing with the volumes of gas that we're trying to deal with coming off of these four arc furnaces plus the main furnace, it's creating a bottleneck. <clears throat> now, I can't remember who said it, um, their name, but I know someone did mention in the comments of that video that you need to run these filters off of one common line, pipeline, um, so you don't get a backlog like that, especially if the filter dies, because if the filter dies, nothing's going through it, apparently. So, thank you, whoever that was. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to lay some pipe along here, and... I know you did mention putting in a a like an extra tank as a overfill tank and we might look at doing that but for first things first I just want to sort this pipe out so it's not creaking and groaning and going to destroy us and then hopefully we will end up with enough CO2 to pressurize that room that will be the plan anyway. So I'm guessing if we just run this like this and then if we just run this along here, this should work I'm guessing. <coughs> and then I haven't quite decided what I'm what colour I'm gonna have the pipes that just um, run the mix. I'm thinking like a pink um, so they're easily distinguishable that anything that's in a pink pipe is just a mix of everything. But I don't think I mentioned it before but the color scheme I have pretty much just kept for the color that's on the actual filter. That's how I've sort of deduced that one out. Right let's have another look and see if that as right so that's sort of spread out now so at least it's not all built up pressure's died right down so now if we fire these all back on working now because I was like I swear I've smelted stuff or ice and stuff that should have N2 in it and I've got no N2 now we should get some N2 hopefully fingers crossed Uh, we're still not getting anything in the pipe here. Okay, 
Okay, is it because I just... A strange, where did all that end to go? Okay, that's a strange one. Maybe we'll have to grab some more, but we should have enough CO2 in there now. I'm hoping to go down and pressurize that room. Yeah, 3.37. So, still no N2. No idea where the N2 went. Let's have a little look, they didn't end up anywhere else. H2. This pollutant. Ah. Uh. Oh, N2O. Maybe we haven't got any N2O yet then. I'm looking at N2 and then thinking, nope. Right, so this pipe now looks completely empty now. Perfect. So that seems to have solved that problem. So thank you again to the comments. That's why I, that's why I love reading the comments, guys. That has really helped me. <coughs> and just before we pressurize this room, what I've done as a temporary fix is down here I've set up a coal generator and I've just been using that until we can start looking into more solar panels or the windmill uh, etc and we'll probably look at automating this but I actually want to move the batteries inside at some point um, so when we look at doing that we'll probably look at automating when these drop to a certain level, that kicks in. Uh, and that should become a lot easier to do once we've looked at the programming of the cooling system in here. Which we're going to look at today. So with that being said, put these pipes back. Why are you still frames over here? Put you over there. Let's head down into the greenhouse. And let's pressurize this up. And this should work now. And it should oh, I've missed the turning. Eh, eh, eh. Right, let's shut the doors. Oh. Silly me. Let's change this one over, actually. What was that? Pressure regulator. There should be a back pressure regulator in there, so let's change this one over, like we said we were going to. And we were going to set it to... That's a bit annoying. 105. Right then, I think we just need to hook that up again. Just to make sure we got... Yeah, that new one on. Okay, so now if we flush the room... And we're dropping nice and quick now. Hopefully it should all go. It should all disappear. It's dropping a lot quicker than what it was yesterday, I'll tell you that. That's because it's it's not trying to suck in the Mars atmosphere from the outside through a window. Again, it's still quite a big room, so I expect it to take a little bit. Same as when we go to repressurize it, it should take a little bit to do. I'm just trying to think where we're going to do cooling, but almost got it all out. It's a lot better than yesterday. Ten times better. Come on. Get the last bit out. <clears throat> hmm. 
not that it matters 100% yet because this is just proof of concept because until I put advanced airlocks in these I'm still going to get transference of pollutants O2 and N2 coming into the room anyway just purely um, from the Mars atmosphere that I'm going to drag in with myself that's just more in a case of just seeing yeah, see, slowly dragging everything out. Okay, so we know that works. So let's toggle this off. We're going to put the atmosphere on. And that's just, again, it's going to start bringing it in. But it's only going to be pumping that in through the passive vents. Just going to be allowing it to come in. So now we need to pressurize the room. We're going to fire these ones up. Now, I did notice, there we go, for some reason, there we go, that goes better, they're a bit finicky, there we go, now we're getting atmosphere in here, and I'm not sure why they're doing that. Let's turn them off and turn them back on again. And just see if it happens again. Yeah, see they seem to be going slow and then... If I turn them on like that, they go quick. Which is really weird. Shouldn't be doing that. But the atmosphere in here is now building. Play with this one again. And that's perfect. So now we've got that done, obviously the temperature is high because this is coming straight out of our tank system. So I'm going to leave the atmosphere one running, so that's still slowly going to climb up to the temperature to what we want. And we're going to go grab some stuff and I'll be right back and we're going to start working on this cooling system. Now just to point out, I've just jumped back in. Um, <coughs> just point out to create this integrated circuit IC10 you are going to need a little bit of resources so gold, steel, electrum and solder so it's a bit of an expensive purchase and you can actually do what I'm about to do with um, just the normal logic chips and I might show you how to do that in another episode or in just like an actual tutorial video but for this we um I want to have a go at programming so it's more in a case of <coughs> excuse me it's more in a case of just for me experimenting with this so I'm actually going to want a uh, I see housing as well I've printed off a computer so far. I want IC housing, which can be expensive as well. And then I'm going to want a. Just so I can see what certain things read out as. I want a. This should be a cartridge for the thing. See, editor. Oh, I'm gonna need IC editor at mobile board as well. Configuration cartridge, maybe. I think we need a configuration cartridge. That should be able to be used in this. Um, where did I see that? I see Edda as well. And 
let's just see if this is the one I want. Yeah, so as you can see, this allows you to read <coughs> what's going on inside a piece of electronics, basically. So we can see what we can write to and what we can call up in the programming terms. So we'll take that with. And to be honest, don't need the miner at the moment. Don't think we're gonna need the data disk. Stick that there, we'll remember where that is. What I want now though is a cooler and a heater. Just gonna print one for now. Iron, 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 iron. Need to do some more mining. So, I'm just going to use one for now. I don't know how <coughs> how effective one is going to be in this setup. Oh, stop that before it builds another one. Um, what did I just make? Was that the cooler or oh, cable coil? We'll need some more of that as well. So that's the cooler. Going to need a heater as well. Oh, we're going to need some pipe as well. And some radiators. Um, I tell you what, let's just do the sensor. Then we'll come back up for the pipes. Okay, and I'll show you why we're going to need pipes in a second. How are we doing in here? The temperature is nice and toasty and the room is still climbing pressure. Which is fine. Right, I'm probably going to want to run. This sensor somewhere in the middle. Filter low. Filter critical. Oh, we are completely out of fill. That's not good. Right, let's just dump some of this stuff off. We're losing so much pressure for doing this, wasting so much CO2, but yeah, we're just working on it. Right, let's get some more of these, get three more of these printed off, shall we? So many of them to recycle. Let's just do some radiators quickly. Still. I'm going to go to this one because I can't be... Um, the amount of stuff that's going to come out of that electronic one. Too much. Let's grab those pipes while we're here. That should be enough. And I've watched a few videos on um, programming <coughs> side of things. So 
Let's see how many we've got in here. Five. Get one more printed. So I, I've sort of, as I was watching and trying to learn, I've sort of written down in a notepad document on my other monitor here roughly what I wanted the code to <coughs> be like. So if you see me looking off to the side, that is what I'm looking at. Okay, I'll tell you what, actually, to try and preserve... I think it's shut from the other side anyway. I realised I'm coming in now this way of quite natural airlock, which will minimise the amount of messing about I need to do. I'll just go out for a day next time. Right. So, what we're going to want to do is let's um, line this sensor, say, um, we'll have it over here, shall we? Just for now. Is that the right one we want? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Now we're just gonna. Why are you in? And what we're gonna call you is. Um, blue, green, house, and so. Just so we know what to find that under. And then we're going to do right, the wall here. I'll tell you what, for now, let's stick the wall here here. And just for argument's sake, we'll do the cooler here. Okay. And on this. We're gonna have to have... Oh, of course. Well, yeah. right, let's just put this straight in. So that's going to hook up like that. And then we're going to have radiators. But you need to have gas inside the cooling system for this to work. And then this is just going to vent out. This is not going to be what the final product's going to look like. It's just so I can get this tested. And um, we're going to have to put some gas in there as well for that to work. So for this, we're going to put uh, put the IC housing down. That should be fine. And we could put the computer right there. What's this going to need? Screwdriver. Okay, so we are going to have to actually, you know what? Uh, I want to see something. If 
I put it there? Can. That will satisfy me more. Just because then I can hide the cables. Even though I can see this. As bizarre as that may sound. That will bug me. Okay, now we're back in. Right, now we can. That on the other side. Well, that's annoying. That's good to know, actually. <coughs> We've been able to hide those on the actual lines there, because then I might be able to transfer these around the room. Could help with that. Right, we're gonna need to run power somewhere. It's not meant to look pretty, it's meant to get the job done. That's for sure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick this in here. And what we can actually do is call this. Green house temp control. Light on. Light on. <coughs> so that's just so we can find it on the computer. I suppose if you are going to be plugged into multiple, um, that's what you would want. Okay, so we're going to put that in there. Shove you in. So this is what we got. So here you could actually select if you had multiple chips in the room or connected onto the computer, you could choose which one you wanted to program. But I'm guessing it, once you export and save it to there, you don't need to have to keep the computer there anymore. So let's see if we can get this working. What I wanted to have a look at over here is just to figure out what is Can we see? Pressure, temperature. Okay. But we want the temperature from that. Should be fairly easy to figure this out then. I say. We want to add it. Okay, <coughs> I'll try and explain this the best I can. So what we're going to have here is, oh, that's one thing we need to do. Is you actually need to. <coughs> In here you've got six pins. So you've got zero to five, and that means you can control six things. You can interact with six um objects as it were. So in number one what we're going to do is we're going to have we can find it greenhouse sensor as our D0 and we're going to have in here let's have 
the heater and then let's have the wall cooler so we know that stored onto there is what they are okay so in here what we're going to do is the first few lines of code we're going to do is we're just going to set up some aliases so we know their names so we're going to have alias and then we're going to have the sensor so we're going to call that the sensor and we're going to and that's stored on d0 okay so basically what we're doing is changing that d0 to sensor so in the code now we can just write sensor as opposed to writing d0 the same here we do d1 and then we're going to do cooler d2 and then I think what we're going to do is have the temperature stored in R1. So you can have out of the R's, I think they're called registries, you can have up to 16. They start at zero again as well. <coughs> but we're going to just store that in R1. And then we're going to start the code. And then we're going to, so we're going to load in first the temperature. So that means that we're going to store what we're going to load into. So we're going to load into the temperature, which would be R1, the sensor, and I think we can do temperature. Nope. Up variables device variables how do we check temperature then creation harvest horizontal idle input count lock mode open output Pressure, current pressure, pressure external, pressure internal, pressure setting, quantity ratio. Okay, we can have temperature. Why is it not reading it? Do we need to do it with a capital maybe? There we go. So you have to do it with capital. So that's going to read the temperature from the gas sensor. And then what we're going to do basically is we're going to tell it to <coughs> now we've set loaded that temperature into our R1 registry. We're basically going to see if for getting the heater to turn on, we're going to see if it is less than. So we're going to save if it's less than. We're going to save it to R0. If so, if the temperature the number that's stored there is less than they, we want it to come on at 20. If it does, heater is going to switch on and that's going to save to R0. And then what we can do underneath is we can set if it's greater than, so to get the cooler to come on, we're going to save again to R0. You know, we're obviously getting the temperature from there. And if it's going to be greater than, say, 30. And then we're going to save the cooler on R0. Now what we're going to do is tell the code to go back to the start. And that should work. That should be that. If I've got this right, we should export it. And because we're at a high temperature, the cooler should turn on. And there we go. So the cooler's tried turning on, but it's not going to work until I get some gas in the system. <coughs> so to do that, I'm literally just going to go grab another vent.
very quickly. Uh, we'll do an active vent just to get some stuff in there. We'll we'll eventually fill it with pollutant in our actual cooling system. But for now. We're just gonna take advantage of that. Of course, I can't put it there. This is annoying. Because the windows are facing the other way. Tell you what, we can use some CO2 to suck it in there then. <coughs> it can have some CO2 in there if it really wants. I really don't get why these inward are not blowing as as quick as they should be really strange right so can we okay let's do this this way then Uh, it's got device configuration still. Can I read the pipe? I cannot. The inward, the outward. Oh, that's not going to work because I haven't got a cable cooked up. Ugh. All this just to get pressure in. I'll rip this out in a sec. I actually just need enough to get us fired up, really. I don't think it matters how much <coughs> how much you actually got to have in there but now the temperature should slowly drop because I've only got the one guy Is it going to do enough? Probably not, to be honest. So what we're going to do, we're going to give it a little helping hand. Whoops. Just to get the temperature down. <coughs> Excuse me, a little bit more. Because once you get the temperature down, you shouldn't need that much. I mean, this usually works like a charm. Problem we got is this. Yeah, we need those filtration systems up and running, really. Hmm.
because we're not actually drawing in anymore. <coughs> so we have to have those filtration units up there running 24 7, which is going to be a little bit annoying. Unless we build, hmm, could actually solve that with building a separate standalone CO2 tank closer to this room for that. Right, let's go get some liquid and see if that brings that temperature down. And we're just going to make sure that the quick swig of my milk. We'll make sure that uh, the heat at one comes on. So I'm going to purposely bring that temperature under 20. Now what we can do, bring this up. Here, yeah, see, we've got our CO2 just sitting there doing nothing. We're definitely going to have to get a lot more CO2 in this. I know cold gives off a lot more CO2. <coughs> so what I'm thinking of doing is encasing that inside a room similar to the arc furnaces. So then when it fires up, I can just capture the coal. The CO2 coming off the coal. I don't like how slow this, this takes. This is um, really, really slow. Considering the size of the room. So, while that is slowly, slowly coming down, I mean it is a bigger room as well, which is why it would take longer, and because the actual pressure is higher in here as well. So, because of that, probably going to take a while to get that temperature down. But it is dropping. It is coming down, which is good. So uh, I'll sort of, I'll try and go over it again, just so you get a gist of it. <coughs> now you can get. So this is what I looked at here. This is where device variables. Um, so what you really want to do if you want to have a play around with stuff is if you get this device configuration card and. We'll just drop that in there. Okay. What you can do with this is you can literally have a look at anything. And then, so error on power, prefab hash, required power, X, all of that sort of stuff you can play around with inside this. And this will show you exactly uh, it will give you an understanding of what it can be. So total moles returns the total moles of the device. Um, so, so when we found the temperature one, um, it just seems like you have to use capital, the current temperature reading of the device, <coughs> which is brilliant. Um, slot variables, so occupied, quantity, all of that sort of stuff. So that's something we can use when working on our automated manufacturing system which we will be looking at and then the other one is functions <coughs> now I don't know too much about this but this is where you can find out where everything does so for instance alias so labels the register a device reference with name device references also affect what shows on screws on the IC base so and it shows you how to lay it out so alias is you, you basically are labeling something and the string so what you're going to call that string and then the reference so whether it's going to be a, a, a registry or a um, a device that's set on the pins 
and then what it says here is actually it will also affect the what shows on the screws and the IC base so if we have a look now at this so it actually says uh, greenhouse temperature control wall heater uh, and cooler so heater and sensor so in the yellow it's actually telling us what we what we uh, put under the alias which is pretty cool but if you had to rip this up and then put it back down <coughs> you'd automatically know oh I need to plug the cooler into that one I need to plug this uh, you know the sensor into that one the heater into that one the cooler into that one which for this room what I might look at doing is setting up another two coolers and another heater around the room um, and then that way this can control five options for us basically but it works it's obviously not fantastic at cooling this room down so I might have a play with that off camera um, why are we flashing in there oh because the pressure is too much in here how do we um, depressurize no idea we shall have to have a look at that so yeah I'll probably have a play around with this um, and then see if we can work at getting it cooler and what we can do for cooling it down but yeah that's the, the f my first attempt at coding I think it went really well um, we can have more of a play with this in the future maybe look at controlling the atmospherics with it um, I definitely want to try the manufacturing side of it and moving all the ingots around so that's something to look forward to and of course I showed you how the pressurization works I'm not quite sure why when you turn these on they're not working 100% it might be because there's not enough CO2 in the pipe or it, I don't I honestly don't know why they're not 100% fired up which is weird. Let's turn these on manually actually and just see what happens there. So it's on mode zero. Power one. If I turn it the other way. Mode one. Okay. interesting right well, hopefully let's give you some food for thought guys and give you a little idea so as always I appreciate the likes definitely appreciate the comments especially helpful stuff like fixing the filtration system up there that's uh, done wonders um, yeah so thank you guys thank you for coming to check out the video and if you ain't subscribed already why not subscribe um, we're going to be putting out more content like this and playing other games soon. Um, I'm just trying to figure out what to put on the rotor next. Valheim didn't seem to take up and Graveyard Keeper didn't really seem to bite anybody's interest either. So I'm thinking maybe another space game might might pique everybody's interest or another sort of construction sort of game. So we'll see. We'll see what comes up, shall we? Another reason to subscribe and hit that notification bell and you'll see what I put up next. As always guys, take care, we'll see you soon.